Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's go ahead and do the conversions between complex numbers and polar coordinates. And let's go back and forth and see how we can express the complex numbers in terms of polar coordinates and polar coordinates in terms of complex numbers. All right, so first of all, we realize that R is, of course, the absolute value of the complex number. So we can say that R is equal to the absolute value of Z. So z being that complex number, and that would be equal to the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, so that would be a squared plus b squared, at least the, the absolute value of the imaginary part. All right, so now we can say that this is known as the modulus. Now, how do we find the angle? Now, notice that to find the angle, we can say that the tangent of this angle is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So the tangent of the angle theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And of course, the opposite side would be the value B right here. That would be B, and the adjacent side would be the value A. So we can then say that theta is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side B divided by the adjacent side A, which would be the magnitude of the imaginary part divided by the real part, and you take the R tangent that, which gives us theta. Of course, theta would be one of the two uh, variables in the polar coordinate system. This is known as the argument. So R would then be considered the modulus, and theta would then be considered the argument. Now, how can we express a complex number in polar coordinates? Well, we can see here that the, the distance A is really the adjacent side to the angle, so we can say that A can be considered the hypotenuse R times the cosine of the angle theta, and B, since that's the opposite side of the angle, it can be considered R times the sine of the angle theta, which means that we can write Z as equal to, that would be R, oop, I forgot my equal sign, so Z would be equal to R, times the cosine of theta plus r times the sine of theta times i. Of course, we can forget the i for the imaginary part. Then right away you can see that you can factor out an r. So you can then say that z is equal to r times the quantity cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. i times the sine of theta or sine of theta times i. It doesn't matter, of course, where you put the i. And so this then would be the way in which you can write a complex number in terms of the polar coordinates r and theta. And so you can see how we can go back and forth now. So r can be expressed as the modulus of the complex number. Theta can be expressed as the arc tangent of the imaginary part divided by the real part. And that's then, of course, also known as the argument. And that's how we're able to go back and forth between. Now, let's try that. Let's try an example. Let's say that we have a, a complex number where z1 is equal to, let's say, 3 uh, plus 4i. And we want to know what r is equal to. We want to know what theta is equal to. So we're going to find the complex, or not the polar coordinates of that particular complex number. So we know that r is equal to the absolute value of z, which is equal to the square root of the real part squared plus the magnitude of the imaginary part squared. That's 9 plus 16 is 25, so that's the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. Then if we want to find the angle, so we can say that theta is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite, of the opposite side, which would be the imaginary part divided by the real part, and so that would be equal to the arc tangent. For that, I need a calculator, or 4 divided by 3. So 4 divided by 3, take the arc tangent of that, and we get 53.1 degrees. So 53.1 degrees. If we now want to convert that into radians, so we um, see here, 53 point, that would be divided by 360 times 2 equals, that would be 0 0.295, well, not, not really. Let's do it again. So 4 divided by 3, take the arctangent of that. And of course, the, the conversion to radians, so we have 2 pi radians, divided by 360 degrees. That's a better way of doing it. So to take that divided by 360 times 2 times pi equals, and that would be 0 0.927 radians. So here we go. Now we have converted this complex number in terms of 
R and theta in polar coordinates. And that's how we actually do that. So there you go. There you can see the interrelationship between polar coordinates and complex numbers. And now we'll show you how to actually manipulate multiplications, divisions, uh, taking the uh, multiplying it by itself or squaring it or taking it to any power. So we'll go ahead and see how we manipulate numbers, complex numbers, in polar coordinates.